Hey guys, what if here, and welcome back to NASCAR Thunder 2003 Lightning Challenges Part Number Four. We are kind of more than halfway through, um, so that's cool. Also, I'm still sick, so I'm not 100%, but uh, I'm getting there. But yeah, uh, there's really not a whole lot else to dive into or psychoanalyze. Let's just uh, jump into it. So before we do, as always, thank you to my two two Patreon people as well as my YouTube uh, members for supporting the channel. First, you get our early access videos like this one, for example, 12, 24 hours in advance, and all that good stuff. And it's very appreciative. It helps me out a lot. So uh, thank you, nonetheless. Let's get into lightning challenges. Bobby the first one today is green is good. The last veteran challenge. He's the rear, the daring pass in the Jr. waning laps of the Pennsylvania 500. Bobby Labonte beat Dale Jr. for the win. With five to go, you need to do the same to get Bobby the victory. I remember this race. As a junior fan, I hated it. But boy, the junior put up a hell of a fight. But Bobby Labonte was just too much of a badass. So let's have Bobby recite it and uh, we'll go from there. What's the most popular color in Pennsylvania in July? You're probably thinking red, white, and blue. But in the hills of the Poconos, it's the color of summer, green. And in 2001 at the Pennsylvania 500, I was looking to make it even more popular at Pocono Raceway and bring the interstate batteries green into the winter circle. With a great race car and a great day for my crew, I made my way to the front of the pack and with five laps to go, it was between Dale Jr. and me for the win. So I'm gonna drop you behind the wheel of the number 18 interstate batteries Pontiac to see what you can do. Let's see if you can maneuver around one of the toughest tracks on the Winston Cup circuit and beat Jr. just like I did. But here's a tip. Watch out for that tunnel turn. Bobby's always a class act. Got nothing, nothing ever bad to say about him. But um, I feel like the color of, of Pennsylvania, since I'm there, in, in is not summer. It's more rain. Rain happens a lot here more than than summer. Nice days. So not quite sure what he exactly means by that. But we do owe for it. We actually have. 1.5 seconds to run him down. Have not run Pocono in a long time, but Thunder 04 taught me some basic braking zones, so at least I got that on my side. As I pretty much... Well, I did mess up the corner, but we're okay. Hey, Tony Stewart's in his proper uh, 20 scheme. Not ours, for some reason, which still bugs me, because there is a 2001 uh, Bobby Labonte paint scheme in this game that they could have used, but they didn't. And it bugs me in turn three just kind of coasting a little bit try not to make the car skirt or slide too much this car kind of handles pretty good at a track like this Darlington's just a nightmare with how it, how it handles but we cut in that gap by almost a second so by math well by just the interval we should be able to get the lead this time by but uh who's to say you know well, there's a good chance we can just mess it up Bobby did warn us about the tall turn, so uh, we got to watch out for that. That was an amazing run off the corner. Yeah, we're going to sneak to the inside. This is probably the worst part of the track to try to make a pass. My game is freezing. What was that? My dog is barking because of that. Like, just hauntedness all over the place. But we're going for a lead. All right, we're good. I, that was just strange. It's not even Halloween anymore, so there's no excuse for that. That was just all levels of weird but we got it we're good and now we'll just coast or chill to the end i don't know why bobby thought that he would be more praised for passing gail jr i feel like that would make everyone upset in this time period or really any time gail jr was leading don't know why he would think people would be more happy about him when he, i don't know maybe i read that wrong or heard it wrong but that don't make a whole lot of sense to me off turn three a nice classic one and done totally fine with that um yeah don't know what really to say. That was just very simple, straightforward. Didn't even make contact with Junior. The game had a paranormal activity. And Johnny Benson just casually 10th. And Ricky Craven, well, 7th. And then ben, ben, Benson, oh my god, Craven's 10th and Benson 7th. Wow, I can't talk. Wow. Hey, we got a press stone. Hooray. <laughs> Next up will be our first legend challenge, Memorial Day 1100. In 2020, Stewart ran 1100 miles in a race car, 500 as an, in an Indy car, and followed by a 600 in his home depot Pontiac. Can you help Tony win the Coca-Cola 600? We'll see. In 2000, he did that back-to-back -back years in 2000 and 2001. Damn, that's. Huh. I guess I don't remember the 2000. Tony Stewart. That was 1999. I don't know. Whatever. I, I was probably wrong. But anyways, we'll let Tony talk. The Coca-Cola 600 is the longest Winston Cup race of the year. 
Your day's even longer if you run 500 miles in an Indy car first. I arrived at Charlotte after coming in sixth in the Indy 500 earlier that day. I'd qualified 12th for the 600, but since I got back to Charlotte so late, I had to start at the back of the pack. By the time the checkered flag flew, I was in third place. At the end of the race, I had the fastest car on the track, and I just bet that I could have run 1,106 miles instead of just 1,100 that day. I would have won. Well, the folks at EA Sports are going to give you and me the chance. You get to take the wheel of the number 20 Home Depot Pontiac, and you get four more laps in the Coca-Cola 600. I guess that makes it the Coca-Cola 606. You've got Kevin Harvick half a second ahead of you, and Jeff Burton 3.6 seconds ahead of him, just like we finished the real race. But this time, it ain't over yet. Four to go, and we're catching the leaders. Let's go win this thing. Now hold on a minute. He said he got third. He got third in 2001. Did they mess up? I. Do we gotta go back to... We gotta look at racing reference. We gotta nerd stat fact this. Because I swear, he did not run it in 2000. I'm gonna figure this out. Looking at racing reference, IndyCar, IndyCar, uh, no, he did not run it in 2000, so they are definitely referring to 2001. 2001, he got sixth, okay. So, yeah, they, okay, yeah, they just messed up. They just straight up just put in a wrong number. It is 2001, this is what they're referring to. Not in two, this is all, it's a lie. Oh, God, that's embarrassing. All right, well, we're gonna have to try to get up there. Yeah, that's, that's uh, kind of amazed that that's a, a flow up as much as it was. Because usually they're pretty good at not making mistakes, but they did it this time. Well, we gotta run them down. Get by Harvick, no problem. Now we just have to get to Burton. And the Sits is the first legend. Uh, obviously, the play is gonna be a lot harder. So I'm gonna have to push it a little bit more to uh, have pace. And I think so far we're doing okay, but it might come down to the wire. I don't know. I just remember when I was younger playing this. I remember this one being hard. I don't know why, but I remember that. But I mean, we're cutting into Burns Gap pretty well, so we're doing pretty good. Also, Tony Surge flubbed up a little bit in his, in, in his sequence, so that's funny. I don't know what really to say other than that. I just ran the Burton. I just gave him a bump and run. I don't really feel great about that. But, um, we'll get by him. And, alright, that was a lot easier than I thought. So, uh, we're not quite clear. I, 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 I want to be clear, and then I can make the cut and edit. Okay, now we're good. Alright. Alright, now we can just chill. You know what? No. I don't feel good about how I passed him. I'm doing that again. I could have won this, but no. I My, my guilt, conscious... No. I want to pass him cleanly. I don't want to bump and run him. Alright, we cop to Burton. I... I'm actually to make this pass on the outside. Oh, didn't make contact. But yeah, they were going really slow. If this is Legend difficulty, I expected this to be a little bit tougher because this game is usually pretty difficult on Legends. So, surprised that was that easy? I, I don't know. I'm just perplexed. But hey, we got the lead. We did it cleanly. And now I can win with a clean conscience. That also makes me realize, too, that what I originally thought that Tony Stewart ran this, uh, the, the double header in 1999 and 2001 correct so i was right so uh yeah that makes me feel good the game had to freaking try to gaslight me but no i in my gut feeling this time was right sometimes it could be wrong i almost went off the racetrack that was almost going to end the challenge right there and that would have been really embarrassing but yeah uh well i can't say it's a one and done but it's pretty simple pretty straightforward and that will be the last chill challenge because the next one is the most infamous one of this entire game right next to the Mike Skinner one. So, um, yeah, I'm going to I'm just glad that was very chill and everything. Wow. And we... Yes, Alan Quickie. Oh, oh, God, that's beautiful. Oh, that's... I'm happy. Good day. I'm glad we got that before we went to the insanity. The game's really trying to, like, make me feel good right now before I get pissed. So, I, I appreciate the thought. Next one up, pay at the pump. Legend difficulty. Jerry Nunu ran out of gas on the last lap at Atlanta and narrowly missed out on his second crew win. Can you conserve fuel or increase your lead enough so that he gets win number two? This one I remember being really freaking hard. I might have to resort to being a dirtbag and hit him. I don't know. We'll see. But we'll, we'll let Bobby and Jerry here talk and uh, go from there. You know how frustrating and inconvenient it is to run out of gas on the side of the road? 
Well, you ought to try it in a Winston Cup race. In 2000, I won the Napa 500 in Atlanta. In 2001, with 19 laps to go, I took the lead from Bobby Labonte. Thanks for reminding me. And I built a nice lead, but heading into turn three on the final lap, I ran out of gas and just didn't have enough momentum to make it two in a row. And even though Jerry here had the best car all day, I got the win. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Hey, I did say I felt bad after the race, though. Well, I really wanted that one back. So here's your chance. You've got four laps to go in the Napa 500, and I'll tell you right now, you'll run out of gas by the end of the race. And I'll pass you again. I don't think so. Oh. No, Bobby, if you play it right, you can still get the win. Maximizing your fuel is a huge deal in Winston Cup racing, and in 2001, Napa 500 is a classic example. All right, Jerry. Let's you and me get it on right here. No, Bobby, this time you're gonna have to race this dude right here. Oh, well, I think I could still win. Good luck. Okay, that interaction was better than I remember. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, that 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 gave, that gave me happy joys in my in my heart. That was good. That was good stuff. Good banter too. Yeah. So uh, we're just gonna kind of play it straight, just see how far we can even take it. I think it's we're just gonna run out of fuel in turn three, just like in reality. But uh. We'll see if we can maybe extend the lead long enough to be okay with it. I don't know. We'll see. But, yeah, this this has always been incredibly tough. And the fact that probably Jerry Nadeau would have had to literally just wreck Bobby Labonte to keep his win. Uh, yeah, that says how bad he was, <laughs> how much he was screwed in that race. Or just the, the, the inevitability of it. But yeah, we're just going to try to just build up a stupid gap and see if that works. I don't know. Well, he flags out. We're almost out of fuel. We almost have to save... Jeez, almost a full lap. Must be run out of turn three like it said, but... Even half a lap, it's still quite a lot. Wow, we are not even going to be close. Wow, that's... <laughs> wow, that's really early. That's just not turn three. Um, but we're going to have to really conserve fuel. How are we going to save that in a couple laps? Yeah, there goes Bobby right off turn four. Um... Can I actually do this in one take? Okay, let me can I do this in one take. They're slowing down. Wait, there's no way. I what? I didn't even have the block. I didn't even have the block at all. There's no way it was done in one take. Was I just that fast going by myself there? I expected this to be like the rest of the video. I don't even know if I even considered that blocking. I was just kind of just running my line. It looked like he was slowing up for me. What? Leave it to me. To make one of the most infamously hard challenges be done just one take. And then I spend like 25 minutes on like some other random one. Well, not 25, but it's like so much longer on random other ones. How my my hands work with this controller make no sense and and just I don't even all right I, all right um I'm getting the thumbnail I'm I'm just gonna just question reality right now wow all right well we got Chad Chaffin and Tim Sauter ooh cool I I just don't know what to say how did I do that I I mean I just ran laps. <laughs> I ran out of fuel way earlier than turn three, but I just coasted. I guess I just had a big enough lead. A lead enough so big that the interval wouldn't even show it. So I guess it was more than two seconds. Maybe it was three seconds. I don't know, but I don't understand it. All right, we're just going to go on. I, I don't know. We'll just, I'm just baffled. Next up is Star Studded. Terry Labonte won his second All-Star Race in 1999. To do it, he had an outrage Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte, and Tony Stewart. Now it's your chance to do the same. Fun fact, if this is anything interesting, this is the oldest challenge in the game, the one that goes the furthest back. Most of these are kind of like early 2002, 2001. This one goes back to 1999, which is interesting. I don't know what to really say about it, other than that's just neat. And also really at this time period, it's like, well, Terry Labonte is like one of the most Carling. recent wins well he did win i think it was his most recent win it was a non-points win he won texas which texas was before this race so this was technically yeah his most recent win i don't know but hey we'll we'll do it we'll, re we'll relive it one of my favorite races of the year is the winston 
The pressure of the points race is off for a week as NASCAR holds our All-Star Weekend. In 1999, I won the Winston for the second time in my career. But to do it, I had to hold off a new young hotshot named Stewart, who got into the show by winning the Winston Open. My teammate Jeff Gordon, and even my brother Bobby, who won the pole. So with the help of BA Sports, we're gonna go back to the Winston in 1999. You've got the wheel of the number five Kellogg Chevrolet. We'll put the pole sitter, my brother Bobby, in front of you. Right behind you is the Winston Open winner, Tony Stewart, and behind him is Jeff Gordon, the guy who won the first two segments of the Winston. So let's see if you've got what it takes to be an all-star. Good luck. Terry Labonte, just like Bobby, class act, always liked him. Um, funny how in the clip, um, he was about to get passed. Sometimes those videos behind him don't even really work right, or there's just something, something weird always happens. <laughs> Like, at the very least, don't have Terry get past. <laughs> that, that, that's real, I feel like that's, like, the bare minimum. I don't know, but, hey, we did the impossible in one, in one take at the Atlanta thing. Let's, let's do this one here in one take. I said Charlotte. I'm familiar with it. We were just here. We just had to pass one car. You know, going from this to 2013 is so just nice just because 2013 is just insane and also a lot of these aren't just like hey you gotta get up through the you need to pass like 15 cars well i'm being hyperbolic but it's like hey pass 15 cars by lap 102 at this random point in the race here they're like key moments of the race and they actually pick and choose they choose like quality over quantity also we're the inside of the line still on call for race lead beautiful and we just need to clear them off four. Perfect. All right, that was simple. I all right. I'm I'm feeling another one and done here. Red flags out. Just kind of chilling here. Almost off the racing surface. Obviously, some paints. Obviously, since this is like a 1999 thing, we're not gonna have any accurate paint schemes whatsoever. None of the the glorious you know, uh, red and, and yellow Kellogg scheme. That was uh, probably my favorite Terry Labonte period of time. But hey, we'll get the dub. Classic one and done. Beautiful. Really no troubles. And yeah, all of my ex my whole existence of this lightning challenges have been questioned after, after the last one. So let's move on. Wow. And we get swoosh, a new thunder plate. Uh, a, a nice paint scheme. I, I, I like that. I like the swoosh. Next up now, is worst to first. Jr. In the 2002 All-Star Race, Ryan Newman won the qualifying Rockets event and then worked his way up from Ryan last Dale to first place. With five laps to go, hold out Dale Jr. finished first. Okay, to well that's that's simple. Earnhardt we don't have to pass anyone, so this should be easy, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I always knew I'd have to work hard for my first Winston Cup win, but man, was this one tough. To even make the field in the Winston, I had to run well in the Winston Open. I came in third there, then led the sprint wire to wire. That put me in the final transfer spot for the Winston, starting 27th. I was in 20th at the end of the first segment, just good enough to move on. By the end of the second segment, I made it up to 6th. The top 10 move on in the final segment, so I was in. But they inverted the field, so I started 4th. I worked my way up to the lead with just 5 to go. It was a winner-takes-all battle with none other than Dale Earnhardt Jr. So now, you get to duke it out with Jr. It's the final 5 laps of the 2002 Winston. I had the fight of my life to get my first win. Let's see how you do. I was trying not to laugh. One, the bowl cut. That's funny. Two, he's so stilted and awkward. He was like that in the, the Dirt Daytona and like NASCAR. And in one of those games, he had like a speaking thing. He was very awkward there too. But, yeah. Uh, this race bugged me as a Dale Jr. fan. Just because Jr. probably could have gotten right up to him and got him like arrow tight or something and or did something but junior decided to not race like that and i think it was probably the first real game lag here. i don't know what is going on with the game today or my emulator but this race kind of cemented what how dale jr would drive he was not going to be like his dad and, and just bump and run everyone to win but yeah that was it was a key moment obviously i was salty about that because um yeah, Junior could have won an All-Star race again. And that was really his last real instance of being that close to an All-Star win again. So uh, that that's upsetting. Um, also, this might be the the furthest 
or I guess like maybe the latest entry of a challenge in 2002, because this was done in, or this race happened in May. The game came out in September, so this might have been like one of the last lightning challenges that they filmed. I don't know, S speculating. I think this might be the oldest one in the game, or I guess the most newest for the time. Don't know, but yeah, we're just holding on the lead, just chilling. So uh, I guess that's gonna be all she wrote. It's really not that difficult. Two, three, and four. I couldn't really pull away from them. They're keeping me honest the whole time, but we did it. And I think at this point now, I'm just getting really, I'm, I'm a lot more used to the game. Well, I mean, we raced at Charlotte a couple times, that kind of helps, but definitely getting more accustomed to it, so I'm not making as much mistakes, so it is getting easier. So, um, I don't know. Wow. But, hey, we got Koi Gibbs. Oh. Oh. Rep. Rest in peace, Koi Gibbs. Koi Gibbs. God, I can't. <laughs> Try to do something nice, and I, I, I said Corey instead of Koi. That's... <sighs> we got Ron Horner today. That takes me back to that. This is like, we're going back like eight years ago. But I did, I tried to do like a silent lap in NASCAR 15 at Pocono because Justin Wilson passed away. And I was trying to do it. And then the AI wrecked. And then every, and the game just like exploded and ruined a moment of silence. It was like that, except less explosion on the racetrack. I don't know. Last challenge for, for the video, and, Jared and Bill Elliott, that is definitely Daytona side side. in that little Story box the there. Lead, that is not Las Daytona, Vegas, so um, Rockingham, that's weird. Ninth, Cup win, but it says enough already. Sterling Marlin almost started 2002 with two wins, but late Tony race Stewart cautions prevented that. Well, can't really say it's late race caution. I guess technically it was late race caution, but he costed himself a win by getting out of the car and fixing damage. That's not really a the caution's fault. Well, the cause to come out, he wouldn't do that. I will, yeah, okay. Um, um, but it says this time helps Sterling get around Jeremy Mayfield and into first place so he can get the win. Okay, we'll do that. We had one heck of a start in the 2002 Winston Cup season. In the Daytona 500, some damage to my car and a late race caution kept me from the winner's circle. No, it didn't. Then in the Subway 400 at Rockingham, an oil slick in turn four with six laps to go helped Matt Kenseth get around me. The yellow flag came out and Matt got that win. By the time we got to Las Vegas, the Coors Light team was ready for the win. With 20 laps to go, I saw history repeating itself as Yala came out. But this time I got around Jeremy Mayfield just after the restart and held on for the win. So here's the deal. You take the wheel of the number 40 Coors Light Dodge. There might be 20 laps to go, but you've got just two laps to get around Jeremy Mayfield and beat this challenge. You'll be starting second, coming off turn four, and the race is about to go green. Get past Mayfield in two laps, and you pass the challenge. Don't get around him, and you have to go and try again. Good luck. I like how he tries to gaslight the viewer into thinking like, oh, well, I didn't win the 500 because I had fendered it. No, it's because you got out of the car, and you tried to fix it. You can't do that. That's your fault. <laughs> it's it be one thing if like the damage actually affected him, but no, he got out of the car and that penalized him. That's his fault. That's not the damage's fault. And then even that's the other fucking frustrating thing too is he w went to the back of the line and drove himself up to eighth in like two laps. He didn't need to get out of the car. The car well maybe 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 him repairing the damage. Maybe that helped. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe pulling out it did actually help. I don't know. But he did need to do it, and it bugs me. It makes me salty. So, uh, yeah, that gaslighting aside, um, we'll try to get the lead. I don't think I've raced at Vegas in this game yet. So, uh, this will be interesting. We just got to get around Mayfield. And we did that very easily. Also, he said Coors Light Team. I didn't know, even know you could say that in the game. Obviously, they say Winston Cup reasons, so what's the harm of saying they're, they're a beer sponsor? I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know, something to know. But we got the lead, and we're good, so um, I guess we'll just cruise away and win uh, in, in one take again. And in turn three, just kind of parking the bus a little bit, just keep it on the bottom lane so four does not get an opening. And there we go. Beautiful, simple, done, and um, yeah. I don't know what more to say, other than um, uh, your, his gaslighting magic is not going to work on me. Wow. 
round. And we get two Thunder Plates, Embo Langley, and, ooh, Kevin Harvick's Bush Series Sonic car. I forgot that that was a, a Thunder Plate, but cool. Bill that Elliott is coming. another six challenges done. Bobby Labonte, look at I don't know why that's our quota now, but next part might be the finale Bill of our Thunder Challenges, really which is crazy to think that it's going to be wrapping up soon. But yeah, that's it for today. Uh, we'll just we'll just wrap things up. Big shout out to my 2-3 Patreon support, Dave from Shift 15, Kamikaze Games, Bailey Carey, and Mexi Lane 196 for the support. Again, I appreciate what you guys do for my channel every single month. It always means a lot. It always goes a long ways. It helps me out a ton. More than I can really articulate because it really does help me. So it's just thank you for the support and everything. And you are MVPs for life. I'll see you all next episode for presumably the finale of these lightning challenges. So uh, we'll see. I really thought that pay at the pump was going to take a lot longer. I was kind of baking on that taking a long time. But no, I guess I was just naturally just that good. I just don't, I don't know. That, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I don't, I, I'm so confused. It really looked like they were slowing. I don't know. I, I, I'm so lost. I'll see you all next episode. See you all later. And as always, have a good day, everyone.